Dogs were very clearly the very first domestic animal, and they're the only animal that precedes the advent of settled agriculture. But once you have dogs, the concept of domestication is something that is now within your brain. Agriculture and settling down and now existing and becoming dependent on a range of plants and animals becomes something that is now much more feasible. Most animals were domesticated just on a single occasion from a single wild population. And what we have now is what we believe to be the first evidence, both genetically and archaeologically, that dogs were in fact domesticated uh, two times. Uh, our collaborators found um, a small petrous bond, which is a, here, a bond in your hair that's very strong. And so the robustness of that allows it to preserve DNA better. When we compared that genome against uh, modern dogs, what we saw was there was a really deep split between dogs in East Asia and dogs in Western Eurasia. So there were dogs in Europe before the common ancestor of all dogs in Europe, but also the old dogs in the world. So if you compare a dog from Asia and a dog from Europe, their common ancestor was around as much as 14,000 years ago. But we had dogs much before that, at least a thousand years before that, in both Asia and Europe. Then when we looked at the archaeological record, we found that there were very old dogs in the East, very old dogs in the West, but in the middle, it takes about four or five thousand years after we first see them on either side of the old world for them to appear in the middle. So archaeologically it was suggesting two origins and then genomically what it seems is happening is that dogs are being domesticated on both sides of the old world and then the population in the east makes its way over to the west and there mostly replaces the dogs in the west. People um, a long time ago, more than 10,000 years ago, in the east and the west of Europe have both came up to the same conclusion that dogs could be domesticated. And that seems to then suggest that maybe there was other environmental or ecological or cultural changes that, or in the way in which wolves and humans were uh, interacting across a huge space, that maybe then dog domestication starts to become a little bit more inevitable given those circumstances. This process can take thousands of generations um, and then at some point, uh, humans may realize that, well, this, we have this relatively friendly animal that lives next to us, what if we start breeding it? And what if we start bringing it in our settlement and choose who is going to breed with? The speed with which and the ease with which we can now generate ancient genomes is staggering. We just go, oh, well, I, don't have, I don't want to wonder. I don't want to suppose. I don't want to speculate about what happened. I just want to watch the movie. So we get the genomic data, we get the shape data, and we can actually see what happened over the last 15,000 years. And that takes all the guesswork out of it. And we can just say, oh, look what we've got. And now we're just telling a story of what happened, <laughs> which is great. <laughs>